This is Learn Kotlin with me, where I'm learning Kotlin programming language through exorcism, and I'm documenting the journey along the way. Our third exercise is focused on loops, exceptions, and a little bit of functional programming for dessert. So the task is to compute the hamming distance. Hamming distance is the count of differences between two strings. So in this particular case, it's two strands of DNA. The two strands might look like this, when put side by side, we can start counting the differences. So G is different from C, A is equal to A, G is different from T, and so on, until we can count in total seven differences. So the hamming distance is seven. Let's start with tests. We have the function called hamming.compute, uh, which accepts two arguments and it returns an integer value. It should be pretty easy to get started. We can see that Hamming is actually not a class because we are not instantiating an object, but at the same time, we can call a method on this Hamming something. So this something is called object declaration in Kotlin, and these objects are singletons, so you can have just one of them. So let's write object Hamming, uh, open the curly braces and declare inside our compute function first argument is our left strand type string and the other argument is the right strand which is also of type string and the return type is integer so the simple way to count the hamming distance is to iterate through the strings and count how many times the characters are different declare hamming distance using var because it's a variable we'll be incrementing it and at the very start it equals to zero then we're going to write our for loop uh, and we're going to say i in zero until left dot length, meaning we will iterate from zero inclusive till the length of left string length exclusive. So if the length would be three, we would iterate zero, one, two. If we would like to iterate with an inclusive end, so from zero to three, that would be zero, one, two, three, then we can use the two dots. Okay, moving on. If left index i is different from the right index i, then increment hamming distance using the plus plus operator, just like in C, and finally return the hamming distance. Running the tests, the first test passed, so let's unignore the rest of the tests, there are quite a few here, and run the test again. There are some failures. Okay, so it says expected and instance of javalong illegal argument exception and exception with message a string containing left and right strands must be of equal length oh looking at the test it's clear that we shouldn't be trying to compare aatg to triple a because they're of different lengths we need a check before our loop if left dot length is different from right dot length then throw illegal argument exception so that's pretty much java here and then we run the test again it's looking good but Kotlin is pretty cool and has a lovely shortcut for throwing this kind of exceptions using the require keyword. We can say that we require that left and right lengths are equal, otherwise it will throw an illegal argument exception with the message we provided. And I love this. We're going to rerun the tests and everything seems fine. The existing imperative solution works just fine. But as I promised for dessert, we will do a little bit of functional programming. So let's make a copy of the compute function, comment out our original solution, and let's keep the required check and delete the rest. Now, instead of writing a loop, we can create pairs out of the two strands and count how many of these pairs have different characters. Pairs won't change, so let's declare them with a val equals to left dot zip right. One other interesting part about zip is that it is an infix method as shown in the documentation. That means we can write it more elegantly like this, left space zip space right. No dots and no parentheses. Now we want to count the pairs where first is different from second, like first and second meaning the first element of the pair and the second element of the pair. If we use the count method just as it is, this will give us how many pairs we've got, basically length. But count method is versatile and allows us to pass a predicate. A predicate is a function that gets an element of the iterable as an argument and returns a boolean. If the returned value is true, the pair will be counted. If the value is false, it will not be counted. We can pass a lambda expression as the predicate so we're going to have our, let's just call our parameter x, and we're going to say x first is different from x second. Uh, obviously, we can name x whatever we want. Would it be good to actually call it a pair, for example? Um, but here's a trick. In Kotlin, there's a convention. If the last parameter of the function is a function, 
then the lambda expression as the corresponding argument can be placed outside the parentheses. So we can just like move it out of these parentheses completely. And this is called trailing lambda. Also, if this lambda is the only argument to that function call, then the parentheses can be omitted completely. But there's more. If lambda only has one single parameter, we don't need to declare that parameter at all. And we can remove the dash and bigger sign and we use the implicit name it. It in this case is our pair or the ax. And that's it, pips. Some basic loops, cool way to throw an exception and some funky lambdas. Feel free to like, subscribe, leave me feedback in the comments and see you next time.